A common problem area for both men and women is a receding hairline or a thinning top. I'm gonna show you how to take an average wig and make a piece that's gonna cover that entire problem area. The wig that we'll be using for this demonstration can be found online for about $50. Almost any wig can be used for this. The only thing that you'll wanna check is to make sure that your top layer is as long as you're expecting. Some wigs are going to be very long, but they can be layered so that the layer on the top actually only is a few inches. So if you're expecting something long, make sure that it's actually coming from the top. The first step is to take our wig and flip it inside out. And this is going to show you how it's constructed. The wig that we're using for this is a lace front. It has weft construction in the back and then more of a cap style on the top. This is pretty common with the wefts and the cap. Some wigs may or may not have the lace front, but this is the most common type of wig construction. In order to know exactly how large you wanna make your piece, you're going to measure your head from the place that you want it to start all the way to the back. You can leave on some of these wefts, just cut them, cut these tabs right below where the weft is sewn, and that will leave a little bit of extra length in the back. For our purposes, we're just going to cut on this top part and just leave this and remove all of the wefts. Now for our sides, you can see this wig comes down a little bit and this is gonna be a little bit more over the ear area. And since we wanna make sure that our sides are open, we're gonna go ahead and cut that away. So where the cap starts to round down, we're actually gonna cut straight forward. And that's gonna be our first step to get this top away from the rest of the body. When we begin our cuts, we're going to start from the lace and move back to where the bottom edge of the cap meets. We're going to use our shears and we're gonna take the blade and kind of go as close to that cap as you can. And that's gonna make sure that some of those hairs um, that otherwise might be crosshairs actually get cut where they're supposed to. If we, if we go too deep into it like this, then if any of the hairs are, po are brushed in the wrong direction, then um, they're gonna get big chunks that are actually gonna get cut away. We don't want that. So we're just going to keep cutting very close to the cap. And now we're ready to round that edge. So we've cut away the entire side and we're gonna move on to just this back part. Now the back part is just where these tabs meet in with the top. So the only thing that we're gonna cut on this back part is we're just cutting away these tabs. So we're gonna cut them fairly close to our cap. Making sure all the hair is out of the way. And be careful and take your time on this. You only have to do it right once, so it doesn't take too terribly long. Just make sure that you're being detailed. It's better to go slow and keep all that hair in place. Okay, just a couple more and we'll be back to our other side. And we're just gonna cut straight back on that side and then we will have our top piece removed. So now I'm finding the channel that I cut last time. And we wanna make sure that we're matching it to exactly where we cut. So I know that this line that I can see where one of the wefts is stitched on the top meets up on the other side. So I'm just gonna use that as my guide. And again, I'm gonna move my blades so that they're closest to the cap so that I'm not cutting off any hair that I wanna keep. And if you're unsure, you can kind of feel from the bottom side. Just make sure you know where you're going. Okay. 
All right, and that cuts away our other side. So now that we have our entire top removed, we're just going to pull the underside away and set that to the side. Now that can be used for a whole bunch of other projects, but we're gonna focus just on the top piece for now and then we'll do a lot of stuff with that in other videos. So now we have our top. And the first thing to do is we wanna just get rid of any of those hairs that were cross hairs that might've been cut off that are just gonna hang in there and we don't want them messing up our sewing. So we're just gonna finger comb all that loose hair out. Okay. Get all of that out of my work area. And we're going to take a look at our top piece. Now, the thing that I'm looking for here is I wanna make sure that any of my cuts are smooth. I like to be really precise and I want to make sure that everything has nice stitching and I didn't cut anything that's going to maybe unravel. And I see a jagged line on here on this side from cutting so I'm just going to smooth that out. And it doesn't look like I've cut into anything that wants to unravel. If I had then I would take a moment here to just put a couple of tack stitches in place to make sure that nothing was going to unravel any further um, and correct any unraveling that had occurred. And I'm also looking at the front piece and I just wanted to make sure that I don't have any real sharp, sharp corners. So um, that's just more of a personal preference. I just don't want it to look like cut like that. So doing that. So now all my lines are nice and smooth. This wig already had a comb clip in the front. Now we can either take that out or we can leave it in. For our purposes, it's fine by me that it lives there, so I'm just going to leave it. The next thing is we want to talk about adding some kind of clip into our piece so that we can easily just snap it in. These are weaving clips or toupee clips. They come in many different sizes. This is a small and um, many different colors. This is silver and I have a light brown and black and nude and all kinds of stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and we're gonna sew them to the underside of our piece. I'm going to use a large size in blonde and that is only because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. If I use another color, it's not gonna show up as well on camera. The other thing is, if you're in a pinch, it doesn't really matter what color you use because it will be underneath, but this is just so that it matches and everything looks nice. We're going to, um, you would want to use something that was somewhat close in color. Now, for <laughs> when, so when you go to sew these on, you wanna make sure that the comb teeth are pointed up. If you sew them on upside down like this, you're going to have to redo them by cutting the thread and flipping them over. So you wanna make sure that you do it right the first time because it's very frustrating to get all the way done with a piece and realize that everything needs to come back off. So we're gonna put one in the front on each corner. And then I like to put some on the back side. And you can, it doesn't matter which direction you sew these, I'm going to sew them so that they are going the, in the direction of my hair. If you put them in going the other way, sometimes what'll happen, you have a tendency to put the front clips on and then when you push the back ones in, it might bubble the top of your piece. So if you can have them pointing in the same direction, that's really helpful. So now that we've kind of got our layout in place, we're going to stitch those down. So I've put thread through my needle and I've put a knot at the end of my thread and I'm ready to start sewing. I'm gonna move my clips off my piece. I know where they go and I'm just gonna focus on one at a time. So this piece has a lace front. So I won't wanna put my clip too far forward because I don't want that visible. The first thing we're going to do is we want to anchor our thread. So we're just going to move our clip out of the way and I'm going to put an anchor stitch underneath. 
I don't want to see the knot on that thread because it'll be ugly, so I'm going to hide it. So right underneath, I'm going to go up through my clip, make sure I'm not getting stuck on the other clip. And I'm going to do three or four stitches through that same hole to anchor it. Each time I'm picking up part of the wig and going through the hole at the same time. If your thread gets stuck, sometimes that happens, just pull the thread back in the other direction. Sometimes it'll pick up a hair and get, get a little hard to pull. Just wanna make sure that that's nice and smooth. If you do pick up any hairs, sometimes um, it kind of binds up a little bit. Hairs are a little finicky, so you can just pick it up and pull. If it's too big of a knot, you can always just go back and cut it off. So I've anchored this, now I'm gonna go back underneath, but I'm not going to come through the hole. So I'm just gonna flip it over for a second so you can see where this is going. Okay, so I'm just gonna go underneath and now I'm gonna go for this front hole up here. So same as the first, we're gonna pick up a little bit of the wig and go through the hole. I wanna move that thread away from the front hair so we don't accidentally grab it. And again, we're gonna do this three or four times. So pick up a little bit of the wig and go through that hole. Okay, one more time and we're gonna move on to the next one. Pick up a little bit of the wig and go through the hole. Again, you're gonna do that three or four times and you're gonna move on to the next one. Okay, dive that thread underneath so that you don't have to see it. And if your thread gets caught on the teeth like that, make sure that you put your needle underneath it and just pull it out. And if you do it again, then pick it out again because we can't have that there. Okay, now we're on the last hole. So again, picking up a little bit of the wig cap and going through the hole. Okay, now we're ready to knot our thread. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna go slightly underneath the clip. I'm gonna push it through a piece of the cap. And then I'm gonna take my needle and go through the loop twice. I'm gonna pull. Make sure that you get your thread tight. And I'm gonna do that two times. And that'll be a nice anchor. So I'm gonna cut my thread, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail. Just enough so that it doesn't, um, that knot doesn't come unraveled. With our first clip sewn on, we're ready to move on. I'm going to do the second one in the front. Okay. 
Continue sewing the remainder of your clips. So I've got all of my clips in place and now I'm ready to go ahead and put it on my model. So I've opened all of the clips, they're snap clips, make sure that they're all open before you start. And since this is a lace front, you can use a little bit of wig tape to hold that down if you need it. Some people like it really tight to the scalp, others don't really care so much as long as the clips are in place, it should hold it down. So since this one already had a comb in the front, I went ahead and kept that. I'm gonna position this a little bit lower than I think I want it, and then I'm gonna slide it back. If you have a clip in the front on yours, remember it doesn't really matter where you put those snap clips, but if you did put one in the front center, do that one first. Because if you do the sides and then you do the center and then the other side, you might find that the whole piece shifts into the position that you didn't pick. So always do that one first. So now we're ready to do the front side. I'm gonna make sure that it's somewhat even before I start. I'm going to take that clip, pull it forward, scoop up that hair and then push it back. And then I'm going to push down on both sides of the clip until I hear it snap. Now I'm gonna to move to the other side and I'm going to, again, hold it in place, but I'm also gonna slide it forward a little bit farther than I think I want it. Scoop up that hair, make sure that it's tight to the scalp and then find the sides of the clip and then push down. Okay, now we've done the front two and I'm gonna move around to the back. Okay, to do your back clip, going to scoop up some of the hair, find the two sides of the clip, and push down. Okay, last one. Same deal as before. Going to find the clip, push it a little bit further forward than it needs to be, pull it straight back, scooping up that hair, putting my fingers on either side of the clip and then pushing it down. Okay, from here, we're ready to style our piece. Now, before I put this piece on, I had put all of the mannequin's hair from the top into a ponytail going back. And I did that for a reason. I did that so that you can see that all of this hair that covers is not the mannequin's hair. So you can see how nice that this covers the top and the sides. These pieces are really effective for that. So she has all of this coverage in through here, right where she needs it. So from there, we're going to check our blend. So this piece was a fairly thick piece on the top as it came down. To check our blend, we're going to take a little wonder brush. I love these brushes, they're great. You can go down over the ends of the hair and see if it just smooths in. This one's really nice, but if you have any problems with it thinning um, into a nice blend over the top, you can simply pull that up. Brush it kind of straighter. And then you can take your shears and just cut straight up and into it. And this will give it a little bit of a point cutting and thin out those ends so that it'll taper much nicer into your own hair. So once you have that taper established and you don't see a shelf line, then you're good to go. So for her, you can see exactly how well that blends in the front hairline. And then the nice thing about top pieces is that you can also incorporate your sides into your style. So we can just simply pull the top. The nice thing about top pieces is that you can incorporate your side hair in with the piece and you can create these really believable updos because you always see the hairline and your hair mixed together and it doesn't have that bulky feel. Wigs usually have a really obvious ear tab so it's hard to pull them back. This is also another great way where you can see how well this blends even though this color is completely different. It always has like that really nice flow to it but you can also tell where the piece hair is from her hair. So you can imagine if this was the same color, it would be completely flawless. 
If this was a men's piece, you'd do the entire process exactly the same, it's just that the top layer would be likely much shorter and it would be blended to taper into a much shorter hairstyle. So hopefully with this trick in your hand basket, you'll open up a whole new world of possibilities for what you can do with your hair. Thanks for watching. And if you liked this video, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a beat. And if you need products for your projects, check out drlocks.com for all your hair extension needs.